Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories, where today, my daughter's friend stole a $5,000 watch from my husband, and we don't know how to tell her parents. Our daughter, who's 18, has been friends with another girl, who's also 18, for about 9 months now, and in the last few months, she started inviting her to our house more often, because they're classmates, and sometimes they have projects to work on together. Last week, she came to our house, and my husband, who's 56, was assisting them with a project since they're studying the same subject he once did. At one point, my youngest daughter returned home with her friends, so my eldest daughter and her friend went to my husband's office. According to him, he had taken off his watch and left it on his desk, and our daughter saw it there, confirming his account. However, when her friend left, the watch was gone. After searching for it throughout the house, I, 36 female, decided to check the security cameras. They revealed that she took the watch when she was left alone in the office for less than 5 seconds. To my surprise, my daughter wasn't shocked because according to her, this is the third time valuable items have gone missing from our house. The first two times, she stole a pair of gold earrings and a gold necklace from my daughter. Initially, we thought they were misplaced as my daughter tends to lose things frequently. However, my daughter is certain that her necklace and earrings were in her jewelry box and her friend took them. Now my husband and I are unsure about whether to inform her parents. She has taken a significant amount of money from our home, nearly $6,000 which is unjust. Nevertheless, since she is young and in college, we want to give her another chance. That's why we've decided not to involve the police and instead wish to discuss the situation with her parents. How can we approach her parents without causing offense? We believe it's essential to recover our stolen items and help her address her underlying issues. Please keep in mind that the decision to not involve the police is based on our academic situation as we don't want to jeopardize her education. We want to reach out to her parents because she still lives with them and they are financially responsible for her. If you have actual video proof of the watch being taken, that should diffuse any awkwardness of the conversation. They won't really have a leg to stand on in terms of just being defensively, you're accusing my kid of something you lost. Being pointed about the fact that you are coming to them first, especially because she's 18, permanent record will be hit, should get them to accommodate getting your things back. If they're a family of scumbags and don't care, then police will be the only path you can take. Edit. I know as far as how they punish or parent to set their kids straight, you really won't and can't have any hope or influence over that so remove that. This has to be about getting your stuff back. Maybe you will learn from how the parents react, how they plan to address, but that's as far as you can hope. OP should not confront the parents. They should call the cops, show them the evidence, and then invite the parents over. Or have a lawyer present for the conversation. Some third party with a responsibility to the court so that the other parents understand the gravity of the situation and don't try to turn it around and claim harassment. Their friendship with those parents is likely already done for. There's no way to rescue the relationship if they're not already taking steps to manage their kids' issues. Well, what would you do in this situation? Would you talk to her parents or the police? Please let us know. I tell her straight up, look, we have video camera footage of you stealing our stuff. You either give it back or we're calling the cops. Then, whether she gives it back or not, I'd still tell her parents about it too. She's a scumbag. Oh, you know how Reddit is, Karen. It's not her fault that she's acting out this way. We need to get to the underlying issue. Don't start with me, Reddit boy. You know how much I despise these people. My husband, 42 male, just admitted to having an affair and getting someone else pregnant. My husband and I got married three years ago. When I was a teenager, I was told that due to medical complications, I may never be able to have kids, but after two years of trying and fertility treatments, I'm now halfway through my pregnancy with our miracle baby. Unfortunately, because of some complications, I had to cut back on my hours at work. It's very physical. My husband offered to pick up more hours to compensate, so he's been working a lot more in the past two months and coming home later. I couldn't see that anything was amiss. Things were the same as they'd always been. He always brings home flowers, food, things for the baby, coffee. He's always sending me thoughtful and loving texts throughout the day. The gaps where he was unreachable were explainable. But this morning he sat me down and gave me news that rocked me. He told me he's been having an affair for the past six weeks and that his affair partner just found out that she's pregnant. He says that if she decides to keep the baby, she's going to raise it by herself and that they mutually agreed to end the relationship already. He wants to make things right. I don't know how things can ever be made right again. He just wants to move on from this, what he's calling his transgression. How do I ever forgive him? How do you deal with the unthinkable? How do I learn to live with the idea that my kid's sibling might be out there somewhere someday? Most importantly, 
How do I learn to move on like he wants me to? Edit. I have an OB appointment for unrelated medical reasons tomorrow at which I will make sure to request extensive testing. I have plans to meet with a lawyer on Monday. I'm talking to my sister to see if I can stay with her. My relationships with much of my family are not good, but I have a pretty positive relationship with her. I will not be seeking other options other than having my baby due to being pretty far along and having been told in the past I would not conceive. Regardless of what my husband has done, I love my baby. Edit 2. I saw my OB on Friday and will hopefully have some results soon. Fingers crossed for all negative. Within the next few days. I'll meet the lawyer tomorrow and go from there. My sister advised me to stay in the house that my husband and I co-own until I talk to a lawyer. This has been such an emotionally harrowing time for me. He's acting like everything is normal. All I want to do is sleep. I keep telling myself that it'll be over soon. It sounds like he has no remorse, and the only reason the affair ended was because she got pregnant. How could you possibly trust a man like him? It sounds like he is minimizing his affair. If she keeps the baby and they still work together, I highly doubt he will completely cut things off. She'll be in his life from now on. Are you okay with that? Personally, the baby would get my maiden name and I'd serve him with divorce papers and child support. My dad is pretending I'm not getting married. So my dad has always been very show-off type of person. Announcements about grades, telling everyone how great his daughters are doing, telling off my sister for having a job he can't show off. When he divorced from my mom, he was a good parent for a while and then he met Eva. Eva is way younger, has had a lot of work done and used to send him flirty messages when he was still married. They got married very early on in the relationship because they've known each other ages. She told him not to text us too much because we're adults. She texts his phone all the time. She forbade him from seeing us Christmas Day or St. Stephen's Day because he needed to be with his new family and it would have been disrespectful to her for him to see his ex-wife and she's overall been an absolute nightmare. And he follows everything she tells him to do. Now I'm getting married and told my dad he's invited but she's not. I've met the woman once and I don't like her. Plus, I know my father isn't a great person and he'd be making jabs at my mom about being older than Eva, etc. To make it fair, my mom's boyfriend is also not invited, although he's a sweetheart. My dad's answer to my invite has been to pretend nothing is happening. I sent him a save the date and he sent me a thumbs up emoji. He hasn't asked me once about the wedding, not even the venue, even though he told me shortly before meeting Eva that he was looking forward to me and my sister getting married and how excited he was. Myself and my fiancé are different religions and cultures, so everyone's had lots of questions about how we're handling that. Turns out he hasn't told Eva I'm getting married and he hasn't told anyone else, so he's just planning to say he has a work trip and come to the wedding. I don't actually think he's going to show up. I think he'll say he is going to and then not show at the last minute, but my sister thinks he'll show up with her and make a whole scene because he told her, Eva has just as much a right to be there as your mom. Anyone else dealt with something similar? Do I need a backup to walk me down the aisle? Why isn't my mom's boyfriend invited? My dad will for sure not show up if I invite my mom's boyfriend and not his wife. My mom understands that even though my dad is not the best dad ever, I still want him there. They haven't been together that long, so she's okay with her boyfriend staying at home. Plus then he can stay with the dogs and she doesn't have to worry about getting a dog sitter. Most of the family is going as well, so there's nobody to look after them. Update. So it turns out my dad ended up telling Eva about my wedding and telling her that she was invited to the wedding to avoid problems. She got herself a dress, booked a hotel, etc. My dad tried to convince me to invite her, but his biggest selling point was that he thought it would be an amazing time to introduce Eva to my mom and my mom's whole family. Why he would think my mom wants to meet her is beyond me, and that she would feel excluded otherwise. He always rubs in our faces his new family, even calling it his new family keeps canceling every dinner he sets up with my sister due to some emergency involving Eva or tells us to call Eva mom. Both me and my sister are way beyond the point of calling some random person mom since we both moved out and he's being ridiculous. He called me again and again trying to convince me and I said no, explaining that I knew the only reason he wanted to bring his wife to the wedding was to upset mom and that I wasn't going to let the two of them do that. He makes jabs at my mom every time he's around her about how great his new wife is. I thought the whole thing was over until I sent him some information about the wedding and I guess he started feeling guilty and told us that he booked the flight for Eva as well and he booked himself on the same flight as my mom. Changed his whole flight plans just so he could be on the flight with her 
so that my mom and Eva could still meet. AKA, he could rub his new wife in her face and try and mess with my mom's head by putting her down and making comparisons. And then Eva would just go off and shop while he was at the ceremony. I'm not sure if this is true or if he was going to try and bring her to the wedding and hope that she didn't get kicked out. I'm trying to convince my mom to change her flight so she can't get inside her head 12 hours before the wedding. I don't know if I should uninvite him. It's sad that the situation was unfair from the start. Mom's boyfriend didn't blow up the family. Mom's boyfriend isn't canceling for BS reasons on the sister. Mom's boyfriend isn't a jerk. He should have been invited so he could sit in the middle seat between mom and dad. I genuinely don't understand why you're even still considering to invite him. Well, what do you think? Should OP invite their dad to the wedding or not? Please let us know. I know he's your dad and all, but the guy's a... I mean, I can't say it on here. We're not allowed to say words like that. Am I the jerk for billing my fiancé after a prenup request? My fiancé and I are high school sweethearts. He lived here about three and a half years in college, but I left him because the last two years he quit his job Complained non-stop about failing classes, but did nothing but sleep and play video games. Didn't pay his share of the bills, but expected me to do all of the cleaning and cooking while working two jobs and school full-time. Then he was mean to me. Time passes, he went to therapy, graduates, stabilizes, and honestly became such a good man. We reconnect and date again. Life happens and we end up in different cities due to work. We are now engaged. He's more under contract, so it's expected I move with him. He also just bought a house because his mortgage for a three bed is cheaper than he was paying for a one bedroom apartment. He put 15k down. We talked about me paying 900 a month towards bills which I had no issue with at first. He mentions getting a prenup. This rubs me the wrong way. I understand wanting to protect assets but like we've been together since 15 and well if we put tally marks next to it he owes me money. I would have to relocate and find a new job in his town, which the only reason I'd go there for is him. I agreed, but told him we need to settle his debts with me and have an established leasing agreement. This offended and made him super upset. We have a notarized contract because I took out 10k in loans after he lost his scholarships and was denied approval. Despite it, I have been paying and never asked for money back before now. His car cost 6000 and I loaned him 2500 for it. Never got a dime back. Although he said he would pay it back, I never really pressed it though. I paid almost all the bills for two years after he quit his job. I didn't ask for any back, but I sure as heck pointed it out. And I decided that it would only be fair for me to pay for a market room rate. We live in the South, and that's 500 to 650 utilities included. I also started requesting half of the vet bills as kitty support, since one of our cats has diabetes. He's taken the changes as a champ, but I can tell he's super stressed out and sad. He literally makes double what I make at the moment, but I know he never expected or maybe even remembered all the costs that I've bitten for this relationship. I feel guilty because I never committed with expectations of it being returned, so when he suggested it, I don't know why I felt salty. Then I got a list of all my costs, which hurt him, and I don't know. Am I a jerk? Did I take it too far? I think your request was totally reasonable. If he wants a prenup, you need to even the score first. I don't understand how he expects you not to be offended by the prenup while simultaneously being hurt by your request for what you're owed. Not the jerk, and he has just been using you as an ATM to fund his life. Am I the jerk for not wanting to have lunch on Saturdays with my grandparents anymore? My husband, 23 male, and I, 23 female, moved a few months ago back to the city where I grew up. Specifically, we moved pretty close to my grandparents. My grandparents had been alone for many years since all their kids and grandkids had ended up moving away for different reasons quite far from where they live. So knowing that we were going to move near them was a great joy for them, especially for my grandmother. My grandparents were so excited about it that they asked us to please see each other at least once a week so that they could have regular contact with us. My husband and I work from Monday to Friday, so we decided to dedicate part of our Saturdays to spending time with my grandparents. We talked to them and came to the conclusion that we would spend Saturday mornings with them at their house and have lunch together. My grandmother was fascinated by the idea since she loves to cook. She has always told us how much cooking de-stresses and relaxes her and how she almost couldn't do it because it was just the two of them and she hardly needed to cook. We still asked them to please let us know if they needed us to bring the food and or dessert on any Saturday to prevent my grandmother from cooking too much. My grandmother told us that she didn't need us to do that at all 
and she asked us not to even mention the fact that we brought food on a Saturday. Despite all this, my grandfather didn't seem to have a problem with this, so we started going to see them every Saturday. The first few months, everything seemed to be going great. We really enjoyed each other's company, and we took the opportunity to help my grandparents with many of their technological problems, such as how to use their smart TV or mobile phones properly. However, as time went by, my grandfather began to make some comments behind my grandmother's back, such as, It was too much for her to have to cook for four people every week. Or things like, We don't have enough money to be buying all this food every week. I have to clarify that my grandparents have a fairly high standard of living and that money is the least of their worries. My husband and I are somewhat ignoring his comments since my grandmother seemed very happy and she always let us know how having us there every Saturday helped her improve a lot with her depression. However, two months ago, my grandfather asked us one Saturday afternoon after lunch to go with him to the city center. When we were about to go back to our house, he told us that we couldn't continue like this and that my grandmother was really being affected by our weekly Saturday visit. He basically made us understand that it was our fault that my grandmother was more tired, sad, and depressed, as if my husband and I were being a burden to them. My husband and I told him that we could change our weekly visit to a monthly visit and that we would bring food for everyone. My grandfather asked us to be the ones to tell my grandmother and made us promise to never tell her that he had talked to us about this topic. That same day at night, my grandfather called us and told us to please not stop going every week because my grandmother was going to go into an even greater depression if we stopped going. My husband and I didn't know what to do and began to feel quite uncomfortable about our weekly visits to their house. Three weeks ago, my grandfather came to our house to talk some things over with us. He told us that he had tried in every way to please everyone, but that it was definitely too much of an expense for them to have us there every Saturday and that we had to stop going every week. My husband and I agreed in a coordinated manner. After all, we were finally going to be able to have Saturdays free for ourselves, so we didn't give the matter much more thought. On Friday of that same week, my grandparents called me on speaker to ask us what we wanted to eat the next day at their house. I couldn't believe it. I told them in a polite way that we wouldn't be able to go to lunch with them for several weeks, but that we would stop by on Sundays to see them quickly in the morning. When I hung up the phone, I received a message from my grandfather letting me know how disappointed he was in me for making my grandmother feel so bad about our weekly meal at their house. I sent him a voice note telling him that we were going to be busy on Saturdays for real and that I was just doing what he asked of us. My grandfather deleted the message from our conversation on WhatsApp. Since then, three weeks ago, we have not gone back to eat at their house again. My parents and my husband say I'm right, but a part of me feels that my grandmother believes that we are the ones who don't want to go and be with them, when in reality, it's my grandfather who forced us to take this step. Am I the jerk? Update. I'm meeting my grandmother tomorrow to talk. I told her I'll take her shopping and we'll go out for breakfast. I'll update you with what happens next. Update 2. I must clarify that I've tried to invite them home several times and my grandfather has refused, giving my grandmother excuses as to why they couldn't come. We've invited them to lunch at our house and even offered to pick them up and take them back home so they wouldn't have to drive. But my grandfather literally told us that he doesn't feel comfortable eating food that isn't made by my grandmother or a restaurant. I should also clarify that I always help my grandmother cook while I'm there. I've tried to bring food twice and it's resulted in great anger from my grandmother, saying that she does not want us to bring anything, and a look of disgust from my grandfather towards the food that we've brought. I know firsthand that his financial situation is good because my grandfather usually asks me for help with his phone and he almost always leaves his bank application open, so I have perfectly seen the money he has in one of his banks and it's a lot. Update. Yesterday I went out with my grandmother in the morning. I didn't really know how to approach the subject, but I finally found the time to tell her everything. She didn't believe me at all when I told her. In fact, she told me that she had only agreed to leave the house with me because she thought that my husband and I didn't want to have lunch with them again. We decided to go to my grandparents' house so we could all talk there. Luckily, my grandfather didn't deny anything that happened, but it was evident that he is more than upset with me. My grandmother is very angry with him. I can't help but feel bad thinking that I could be the culprit of that anger. My grandmother spoke clearly to all of us. She let us know that she doesn't enjoy going out that much and that's why she would prefer for lunches with them to be at her house. She also told us that she doesn't want food or money from us since she only enjoys the simple fact that I help her cook and that we can all enjoy that meal. She told us that she wants those weekly lunches, but that if ever my husband and I can't go, that's okay. She told my grandfather that she felt disappointed with his attitude. 
Everything seemed to be understood and my husband and I went home. I called my parents and told them what happened. After talking to them, I'm sure that my grandfather does not have any mental problems or dementia. He's simply a very unfamiliar person who hardly enjoys spending time with his family. He's quite hypocritical and really only cares about himself. My parents have suffered too much from his attitude. They even told me how my grandfather has let my father sleep for three days on the street since he wouldn't allow him to enter his house for not cutting his hair like he told him to. My father was 21 at the time. So my grandfather's personality just sucks. I had always known that he was a bit strange. He's always had favorite kids and less than favorite kids, same with his grandkids. My family and I are definitely not one of his favorites. I understand that he's still my grandfather and I'm not going to cut off my relationship with him because of it, but I'm definitely not going to allow certain attitudes on his part and even more so after knowing the crap that my parents went through with him. So for now, Saturday lunches will continue to happen every week at my grandmother's request. I know that my grandparents have not spoken to each other since the conversation we had yesterday, so I don't know how long this angry situation between them will last and how long my grandfather's anger towards my husband and me will last. The grandfather sounds like a major piece of work and a miserable person to be around. I do feel bad for the grandmother having to deal with someone like him. Grandpa sounds like a miserable, selfish jerk. Deliberately deplete my prepaid phone balance? You will pay for it 1,000 times over. I went to middle school in the early 2010s, right before smartphones really took off. I got my first phone right before starting 6th grade. It was a slide phone with a pay-as-you-go plan that cost 10 cents per minute for calls and per text message sent or received. Worse yet, sending or receiving photos cost 25 cents each. It was very expensive and my parents only gave me $100 a year for this. If I exceeded that amount, I had to cover the rest with my limited birthday and Christmas money I had. Fortunately, most of my friends were good about helping me preserve the balance. They would call and I'd let the call drop, but immediately call back on a landline so it wouldn't count as a call. Or they'd email me or message me on Skype for most things. Everything was great until Derek joined the group in 7th grade. At first, we thought he was funny, but we quickly got fed up with him as he was very unpleasant and exhibited many antisocial behaviors. He started drama within the friend group and also caused issues between us and other kids outside of the group. He was manipulative and always played the victim when others rightfully called him out on his BS and he knew how to charm parents, so getting rid of him was easier said than done. He was the one friend who didn't respect my phone situation. He very frequently texted me dumb memes, even though I told him multiple times to just email or Skype them to me instead since picture text messages cost 25 cents each. Unfortunately, blocking phone numbers was a feature that was unavailable for this pay-as-you-go plan, so there was nothing I could do as he spammed my phone. One day, he got mad at me for some reason and spammed my phone with memes. He must have sent me over 100 lolcats over text. He kept sending them until I lost service since my phone balance was depleted. I had lost the $40 remaining in my account as a result. I was extremely upset and demanded that he pay me the $40 he had cost me, and he refused and said it wasn't his problem. I got home from school really upset and told my dad about the situation, expecting him to go and tear Derek's mother a new one and demand the money. But my dad said that it wasn't worth the battle. I even asked him about a small claims court, but he said that not all battles are worth fighting and that the effort wasn't worth $40. He took me to the carrier store and loaded $50 onto the phone. The carrier changed my phone number and they managed to block Derek's number. They had initially said that blocking phone numbers wasn't possible with this plan, but my dad insisted and would not leave the store until they did it. I was extremely paranoid about my phone number being leaked and the other kids spamming it to mess with me. Fortunately, my parents got iPhones that summer and got me one too, and the new family plan had an unlimited text plan. Nonetheless, I was ticked about the $40 he essentially stole from me out of malice. Fortunately, not too long after, there was a big blowout between Derek and the rest of the friend group at the end of the school year, and we permanently kicked him out of the group. He was an outcast the following year in 8th grade. Nobody was tolerating his crap anymore, and he changed schools the year after, and we never heard from him again. Fast forward to a few years ago. I was back home for a few months between graduating college and starting a new job on the other side of the country. I went out to some garage sales one Saturday morning, and I ended up at Derek's house. I recognized his mother, but I don't think she recognized me. I guess glasses and a beard is all you need. I noticed some Pokemon napkins out for sale, and when I picked them up to look at them, Derek's mom said that her son had been obsessed with Pokemon for his whole life 
and that she was tired of Pokemon stuff occupying her home for so many years. I said that these napkins were for my younger cousin who's really into Pokemon, and I asked if she had any more Pokemon stuff. She said she didn't know people were still into that, and that there were a few boxes in the attic with her son's old stuff. She actually took me inside the house, which I never imagined I'd set foot inside ever again, and let me climb up the attic ladder and take down several large boxes to look through. The first one had Christmas ornaments in it and other junk, but I freaked out inside when she opened a box jam-packed with Pokemon video games in the original boxes, though I kept my cool on the outside. The whole reason I had agreed to go inside in the first place was because I was holding out in hope of this exact scenario happening. See, I knew Derek was obsessed with Pokemon. Our friend group liked Pokemon back in the day, even when other kids thought it wasn't cool, but Derek was on a whole different level. He bragged about his Pokemon collection all the time. At the time, he had every single main series game in the original box and in mint condition, as he always had to add in. I went to his house once and he was showing me his collection. He yelled at me for touching one of the games. Nobody was allowed to touch them except him. He had many older Nintendo games in excellent condition, but Pokemon was his favorite. He had a couple of incidents with his mom damaging or throwing away things. It wasn't out of malice, but just ignorance, and she didn't think the games or collectibles had any value. Fast forward into the present day. I was thinking about this when I asked his mother if she had any other Pokemon stuff. She ended up bringing out the mother load. We opened all the boxes she had me bring down. Within the boxes, there was the beloved collection of Pokemon games, all very well preserved, as well as several Nintendo consoles, hundreds of games, two dozen binders full of Pokemon cards, and there was also a box of many Lego sets with the original boxes and everything, and many old Star Wars Lego sets. When I saw Jango Fett, I knew I struck gold. I told her that I liked old Legos as well, and asked her how much for the five boxes of games, cards, and Lego sets, and she thought for a second and said, $100 a box, or $400 for all five. I told her I would take it all and hauled off to go to an ATM. I loaded the five boxes into my dad's truck and immediately drove home. I knew there were potentially tens of thousands of dollars of goods in there. That was the score of a lifetime and I finally felt vindicated for the $40 Derek had taken from me all those years ago. I ended up giving away all of this stuff to my uncle, who's a hobbyist and eBay reseller. He offered to sell it all. He was willing to go through the effort and sell everything individually and despite my insistence, he said he wouldn't take more than a 10% cut of the profits after all fees and taxes. He went through and logged every single item along with the estimated value and the total of the whole lot was about $40,000, which was a poetic number since this was 1,000 times the value of what Derek stole from me all those years ago. My uncle sold most of the lot before the end of the summer and ended up writing me a check. Though it was considerably less than $40,000, it was still a life-changing amount of money for me. I was able to pay off my remaining student loans and put the rest towards a down payment on my new car. Homeless Karen demands to live with me. I kicked her out. So I'm 22, female, and my boyfriend, who's 24, has this friend, another female, who's 25, who moved in four months ago because she had nowhere else to go. Now, I didn't mind having her here as long as she respects our boundaries and the rules around the house, but that's definitely not it. She's very loud, comments on everything, and just does inappropriate stuff in general, and excuses it for being a Latina and says that that's just how they are. She doesn't help at all, besides maybe cooking sometimes, but doesn't clean up the mess she makes, and she invites people over whenever she wants. She changes in the living room in front of us, and I asked her to change in her room, but her excuse is that she was trying to feel like home, and then she suggested that I should do it too, as it will strengthen my bond with my boyfriend. I talked to my boyfriend about how I'm kind of uncomfortable with this whole situation, and he told me not to overthink it, and that she's just very unbothered and cool. She always interrupted our time together and would sit between us during a movie or take my space while I took a bathroom break and she cuddles him in the most unfriendly way and when I asked jokingly if she was trying to take my man, she would excuse it on her ethnicity and say that that's how they grew up so I knew I had to ruin this Friday night they had for them. I went up to them and she was all over him as usual. I called my boyfriend and when he was about to get up, she said how it was their favorite part and that he could leave later. I insisted, but she kept pulling him, so I went and pulled him to our room, discussed how what she's doing is really upsetting me and I no longer want her living with us, and he agreed I had the right, but that she has nowhere else to go and that I'll have to wait until she finds a job, which she's not even trying to get. While talking, she came up and tried to open the door, which was locked, 
So she started knocking and we just ignored her until it got louder and he asked her to leave, but she got even louder and then started saying that I ruined their only time that she gets to spend with him, which obviously is not the case. I had enough at that point, but my boyfriend suggested he talk to her first. So he went and they took too long, like almost two hours. So I went to check on them and I heard her telling him that he shouldn't accept someone who ruins a friendship as a partner and that it's a big red flag and that he should kick me out. But this place is actually my property that I inherited from my aunt and at that point I knew I had to kick her out. I didn't even ask with what conclusion they came up with and waited in the living room until they came out and I just told her to look for another place and gave her two weeks max. She's been crying since yesterday, refusing to eat and not coming out of the room and my boyfriend is saying I went overboard and I just hit a sensitive spot of hers, basically telling her to leave when she has no family or anywhere else to go. So, am I the jerk? Update. Thank you everyone for the advice and for helping me open my eyes to the real issue. It was past midnight when I posted that and my life literally took a 180 in less than 24 hours. It's been overwhelming and I didn't expect this would reach so many people. The comments were like a slap in the face that I really needed. Apparently, I was too blind. Yeah, I guess my boyfriend isn't who I thought he was. He's been trying to give her food to calm her down and he literally took a day off from college and work. He goes on Sundays too, which he never did for me and he never even got days off from his classes unless really necessary with proof. Nursing. I don't know how he managed to get a day off. I really wanted to make sure it was what it looks like before deciding my next move. I prepared lunch way before time and asked him if he was around for lunch. And his response? I'm trying to get her to have breakfast and you're talking about lunch. You're becoming unrecognizable. Yeah, I didn't know where to reply. So I just asked again, but he said we can have lunch together if she's willing to join us as it's rude for us to eat without her. At this point, I felt like crap to be honest and asked him why she was so important that he canceled all of his plans just to support her emotionally, which he never did when I went through things myself, but he just left like that. I invited my guy friend over, which he doesn't like, and I explained to him our situation and just asked him to be comfortable. I didn't want to do the cuddling stuff like them because we didn't break up yet at that point, and it was weird anyways because we don't usually. My boyfriend never realized someone was over until he came to take food and he saw us having lunch together and he just gave me a look, said hi, and was going to take some for themselves until he realized it was a creamy rice casserole, which his friend doesn't like, and yeah, I did that on purpose, and chicken roast with some sides, and he literally glared at me and said, you know she doesn't eat that, and I just replied, well, it's not her who I made this for, and then he threw the plate, started shouting, asking what was wrong with me, and that he wished he never dated me. It was so scary, my friend got involved, they got aggressive and I just asked him to leave with his other girlfriend, which he replied with, Oh, so you're replacing me that fast? But I told him that he was the one who had replaced me a long time ago, but I was too dumb to realize. He actually moved in fully when his friend came and colleges here do provide dorms, but of course it's not like she can live with him and I couldn't care less anymore. Also, no legal action is required for someone you haven't signed papers with where I live. They were just guests. I packed his things for him, which aren't a lot, and left it by the front door. He came crying and apologizing and acknowledging that what he did was wrong and some other BS I didn't want to hear because the damage was already done. My friend was of great support and he dealt with everything else as I cried my eyes out in my room. And that sums up how I went through my first heartbreak and it was my first relationship and I did love him, but I guess I can watch, eat, and do anything now without catering to anyone's needs. I'm changing the locks tomorrow morning and we're ordering fried chicken, apparently a proven heartbreak remedy by my friend. And although her excuse was bringing up her race, I know better than that. Thank you all for the support. Not the jerk, but you don't have a homeless friend problem. You've got a boyfriend problem. Well, what would you do in this situation? Would you kick out the Karen and your boyfriend or not? Please let us know. Humans never cease to amaze me. Am I the jerk for putting dirty dishes away? So I, 16 female, can admit that when it comes to chores, I've never had too many responsibilities. I have to take the dog out for a minimum of 15 minutes a day, keep my room clean, and put away the dishes. My mom, who's 39, always does the dishes. Recently, my stepdad, who's 42, fixed our dishwasher and we've been using it instead to make things easier. The first time we used the dishwasher, I started putting things away and found a glass had broken. No big deal. 
Second time, some of the things had visible food and such still on them. I put them in the sink, assuming they would just get redone, and I'd put them away the next time. I had been doing this for about a week, putting a few utensils, maybe a cup that had visible food, when my mom finally talked to me. She said that I needed to do my chores right and stop putting things in the sink just so I can go back to my phone quicker. I said that the only time I ever put things in the sink was because they were still dirty. She said that was garbage and I needed to stop or else she would take my phone for a bit. The next day as I was putting away the dishes, I saw some more forks and spatulas were still somewhat dirty and a mug, my mom's favorite, had some dishwasher gunk inside. Doing as my mom told me, I put everything away. When she came to the kitchen, I sat at the dinner table and watched as she grabbed a spatula and noticed it was dirty, but just sighed and put it in the sink. After she went to grab her mug, when she saw it was full of dishwasher gunk, she looked over to me and asked what I thought I was doing, and I kindly said that I had just put away all of the dishes. She blew up and said that if something was obviously dirty, I should put it in the sink and not put it away. I pointed out the flaws in her argument. After that, she took my phone for the day. I don't think I did anything really wrong, but I want to know, am I the jerk? Edit. I'd like to start off by saying thank you for everyone's input. I do see how most of you see that I'm the jerk, so I'm talking to my mom tomorrow. One thing I will also be doing is telling her that sometimes I would like her to listen to what I'm going to say, even if I am in the wrong. One last thing I would like to mention. I saw a lot of people saying that I was a brat and I'll be in for a rude awakening when I move out. You are wrong. Sorry, between the ages of 7 and 11, my dad had a horrible girlfriend and I was doing everything in the house for myself, my dad and his ex along with his ex's kids. I know how to do these things. They're just not my responsibilities anymore. I'm also at the top of my classes and on track for some great universities and jobs. I am also almost fully done writing a novel I plan to publish before I'm 19. Thank you for listening. Edit 2. So there was a certain comment that you have apparently been downvoting, which I think is terrible, as this person has made me think of the situation and really my whole life in another light. Someone mentioned how they are autistic and sometimes don't understand things right away. I relate to that a lot. And when it comes to me mentioning what happened with my dad and his ex, I never wanted to use that as an excuse. I didn't mean it that way. I was frustrated and annoyed by people saying I'll never amount to anything in life because that is probably my greatest fear. I honestly don't care if you guys think I'm a jerk or not anymore as I'm already sorting out the situation with my mom and everyone calling me horrendous things is just making me really upset. Those of you calling me things and absolutely terrorizing me as a human, you need to grow up. You are an adult who got so annoyed with a teenager having an argument with their mom that you decided to bully her? Grow up. You're the jerk. When you see something like this, you need to hand wash it clean. Long term, you need different dishwasher soap or a better dishwasher if it's not cleaning your dishes properly. If things are coming out dirty, you need to add dishwasher salt and rinse aid to the machine. That's not what your mom wanted and you know it. Stop pretending you don't know what she meant and using weaponized incompetence. By doing the dishes, your mom expects you to clean the dishes and not just wait for someone else to do it for you, then put them away when they're clean and dry. You're the jerk times a million and way too old to behave this way. Well, who do you think is the jerk, OP or her mom? Please let us know. Nothing like a little malicious compliance when it comes to your chores. Reminds me of the time my dad told me to cut all of the grass in the backyard. Let's just say he wasn't happy when he saw what it looked like. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.